morning everyone i hope you're doing well today i will be showing you my july favorites when i think about june june is the ultimate favorite month of the year for me and i think it reflected in color as well it was really vibrant and colorful and really summery actually this month it has quite a bit of muted color palette but there will be two of my favorite all-time favorite um, colors in in the kind of popping spectrum of things so what i have here in this little tray are some mixed media art supplies that i will share with you and then here i have got two watercolor palettes sorry if the angle is different to what you're used to but we have a weird weather situation and at the moment like this area is covered in the sunshine when it pops out and then it goes back behind the clouds so i thought that for today this angle would be probably the best anyway two color palettes which i will show you a couple of colors from that made it in my favorites and in terms of the mixed media tray here i've got some acrylic inks and I've got Tombows, I've got Neo Color Twos, and I also started using my Museum Aquarelle um, watercolor pencils again. There was a little break I took from them, but they're so, so gorgeous, and I started uh, using them in my art this month. So let's do it. So I say this month, um, Today is actually the 2nd of August for transparency, but um, of course I am mentioning July. So I'm going to start with watercolors first and I swapped to a brush. Let's see how I get on with this one. This is the Princeton Heritage Round 3. It has more of a spring back to it. It doesn't hold as much moisture as the one that I've been using a lot lately which is the Neptune so let's see how I get on with it so first of all I am going to show you the chartreuse color which is a beautiful beautiful green so you'll see this color popping throughout other mediums this month and I really really love it and if you've been watching this channel, you will know. So see this brush, because it doesn't hold as much water, I don't need to squeeze the water out. So it's actually quite enjoyable to use. So we've got the chartreuse. Then another color that I have actually in both palettes is the green gold by Daniel Smith. So I'll use this palette here to swatch it from so again juicy green gorgeous gorgeous color it's been a long time since i used this brush actually and I kind of been craving a little bit more control um this brush i love using it but for some reason in the last few projects that I've been working, I just couldn't get it to do what I needed to do, which is really, really strange. Maybe something changed in how I approach things, but um, I'm quite happy to have changed to this brush. Right, so another color from this palette before I move on to this palette here. So this is my botanical palette, and here we have got iridescent scarab red. So, I've done a um, illustration recently where I used this color for eyeshadow and underneath the eyes and I absolutely loved it. I'll show you an example and that illustration I did yesterday which is 1st of August so technically it shouldn't be included in July but I did include this color in my botanical palette which I have created I think in June so I do enjoy it 
but in this particular illustration right here I just absolutely loved it with this entire color palette so here you can see around the eyes on all three illustrations and what it does it has this blue very light blue kind of green blue maybe turquoise is a blue shimmer and it's just so so gorgeous when the light hits it otherwise it's like a chocolatey color uh, very very beautiful brown tone it's hard to describe but the closest i could describe it to is to the mac eyeshadow in club beautiful okie dokie let's see I'm, i think i might need to build up this here maybe i'll just do like a line of a really saturated there we go dark tone so you can see as a comparison how dark it could get once it dries i think you'll see the blue better on this swatch so moving on to my Daniel Smith palette, the favorite colors here are two colors. So we've got the Cascade Green, which I used in Cornwall illustration and just remembered how much I used to enjoy this color. It's got turquoise in there, it's got some kind of beige undertones, it's got all sorts of things going on. And in fact, let me do the same in full opacity, as well as actually, I'll try to do another one where I just play with it and get it to separate more so you see differences and then another one i really enjoyed this month the month of july is shadow violet very interesting um, color combination and mixes i achieved with this color when using it together with cascade green and also actually surprisingly in some mixes with like a hot pink acrylic ink so i'll do the same i'll give you a dark swatch and then i'll do one with loads of blossoming okay I'll show you the other illustration. So we have Cascade Green here together with the Fluoro Pink, so the Fluorescent Pink by Dallaroni. And I could achieve some really beautiful stunning granulation um, and also color mixes. And then Shadow Violet with Cascade Green, also a variety of gorgeous, beautiful colors. Oh, this is Shadow Violet, Cascade Green plus Fluoro Pink and this is Cascade Green just with Shadow Violet without the Fluoro Pink. Um, all of these are recorded as tutorials or videos so you will be seeing them on my channel. So these are the watercolors for this month. As you can see the color palette is quite interesting. <laughs> so far nothing pink in here but the pinks will be popping through the other mediums. So let's move on to let's say to our Tombows. I'll start with the pink. So the color this month is 725. And then you also get the fine tip, which is beautiful. So they're water soluble so you can pull them out. They create beautiful blossoms as well. 725 is Rhodamine Red. Then we have this color which I have featured many times before. Really enjoyed it again. And this is the 026, which is yellow gold. And 
and then this actually as a combo makes beautiful water um, illustration. I use this in a number of illustrations as well, which I have recorded tutorials to. So I'll show you a few examples of those. So this is like a like a grey green. I would describe it as and it's actually 228 which is yeah gray green that's what it's called perfect name for it and then we have this like a lilac-y gray color this color had really long ago like from long long time ago this is N60 which is cool gray 6 Together, these two colors, when they're combined, they make really, really beautiful blooms and all sorts of things. So I'll show you examples for that as well. So I've done an illustration here of Canary Wharf from a picture that I took over the weekend. And then here I've got those two colors together as well as adding some of the cascade green throughout. But here are some great examples of those two colors from the Tombow playing together and creating these stunning um, blossoms and color mixes. And then here again, those two colors together. Also have an example here too. So this was an illustration from Cornwall. And here, how beautiful are those? They just really melt into one another and create the most stunning effects. Beautiful textures and just really, really delicious color mixes. Now let's do the watercolor pencil. So we've got a number of colors here. Now sepia 10% is a color I love using in a number of different ways. And it's just a great color altogether. Spring green great color to add some juicy green into your illustration and then we have olive yellow it's similar but has more yellow in there and more kind of like muted and then green ochre would be even more muted and it's more of a mustardy type of a color so these are my favorite watercolor pencils. I always mention that in my videos. So if you're new, welcome. But yeah, these are just superb quality watercolor pencils. I have not come across anything like these. The pigment just melts and you could completely eradicate the texture of the pencil which doesn't always happen in watercolor pencils so I personally love that because what it means is I can go into an illustration create a very saturated layer of the pigment from the pencil because I can get a sharp point and I can really get into there and then I can layer water over it and it just makes it all start sort of to come alive and activates the pigment and the pigment starts to, in a way, kind of glowing. And what I mean is it just becomes vibrant. Okay, now let's focus on, oh, did I tell you the names? I think I did, right? So this is the sepia 10% and then spring green, olive yellow and green ochre. Next we have got a trio of greys and I really really like this color combo so next to each other they look great so again these are water soluble so far we had everything water soluble which is great to use in place of watercolor if you wanted to try something new or combined with watercolor because like I said to you combining Tombows with a cascade green or any other color of course is just a really beautiful thing to do. So we have got first color is Payne's gray, then we have beige, and then we have light gray. So near color twos, they're water soluble, 
and nail color ones they're waxy and they are not water soluble and then let's see very similar they're both by Karen Dash, so they're very similar in the sense of melting the pigment to the watercolor pencils. They are very beautiful in the way the pigment just shoots out of them. So you could, for example, wet the tip and just draw wet, or you could create a watercolor like wash and then drag your neocolor to through it and make. Uh, some interesting effects. I've got loads of videos where I showed those techniques. Let me just show you. So in this video here I have demonstrated, um, I'll try to link it up if I can, but basically we have all these beautiful techniques here and the video was about bold effects in watercolour and here is the difference between Neo Colour 1 and Neo Colour 2. So with Neo Colour 1, because they don't melt, what you can do is you can layer them first and then or draw with it on paper and then layer watercolor on top and then you will see that it just resists the watercolor and it just pops out very very sharp underneath um, the paint and if you use it in a clever way which is creating loads of contrast you will find out that it just looks gorgeous okay so then we have final um, our supply here and we have got the golden high floor acrylic which is basically acrylic ink in other words and this is the green gold love this color so if you layer it thickly it will dry with like a glossy acrylic type of a finish i'll do large swatches and then you can also use it like watercolor paint with it like you would with watercolor and you can also mix other colors and do all sorts of interesting abstract art things so this is a fluorescent pink in other words neon pink and it looks wacky on camera but it's a beautiful bright pink i'm just going to try and lift this dollop of dried paint so it doesn't like much water because what will happen is just goes into nothing which you know could be a thing if that's what you are aiming for but personally I think as it is out of the bottle for that crazy neo color effect just sprinkled into your paintings really does a great impact so in this illustration I used this pink the 725 and then used this pink which is the fluorescent pink just sprinkling and drawing in some areas so here I've used it straight from the bottle here just a little bit of brush kind of stroke and blending into the other watercolors it can really play nicely combined with watercolors as well so you can mix interesting effects so beautiful color and then the highest contrast which i like to add in my illustrations is the paints gray dalaroni these are fw acrylic inks and they also are really beautiful so you can see it's sort of like black and really really full of contrast and then if you add a bit of water you get a lovely effect as well so i'm going to title them and give you a close-up and you can note the colors that you like and see how you feel about it so you're back to my left now to the usual angle the sun is out but it's out of the view so as a whole this color palette is actually quite interesting it's got enough color but it also is more tamed down so it's a little bit more calm and I really love the color palette together it works well it's got some beautiful more muted cool tones as well as some of the brighter colors there's contrast there's middle kind of value there's light value there's dark value so it it goes through the whole spectrum of nicely put together 
color palette. It's very balanced, I think. So I could easily use all of the colors in one painting or just take a more limited color palette out of it and create some beautiful artwork. So here are all of the colors. I'm going to give you a close up. I messed up the writing a little bit here on the chartreuse. So that's the color here from my own watercolor brand Alona Creates. And there is currently a sale going on because I will be rebranding the packaging. So there's a fantastic sale on my website, Alona Creates. Check it out if you're interested. Also along with some of the uh, stamp sets if, if you are into cute and pretty or fun swatches so you can use the color wheels or other elements. There is loads of the clear stamp sets available for this type of a fun swatch fest. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the colors, the swatching, talking through some of the different mediums that maybe you haven't discovered yet and you'd like to try them. And also seeing some of my artwork that I have created using these colors. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.